Hey guys, Mr. Farmer here. Chapter 8 today, Autodesk Inventor, Chapter 8. Uh, it is part drawings and 3D model based definition. So we're going from uh, the process of modeling to the process of actually making a drawing that we can send to a manufacturer or a machine shop or something like that. Uh, objectives. We are going to create drawing layouts from solid models. We're going to understand associative functionality. Use the default borders and title block in the layout mode. Arrange and manage 2D views in drawing mode. Display and hide feature dimensions. Create reference dimensions and create 3D model based definitions on solid models. I don't know if we'll get to that last objective in this video or not, but we'll see where we end up. So originally I was going to model this part ahead of time and then just show you how to make a drawing out of it. But I think um, that that you might benefit from seeing how I'm going to make this part. So this is called the U bracket. Looks like this. And you can find that on page 8-3. And you might ask yourself, how in the world would you even start this? Because um, it's a little weird, right? And I will show you how I go about making this model. So we're going to make this. I'm going to draw a line across here. And we're going to extrude this from the center at 2.5. 2.5, right? So that part's pretty straightforward. But we've got to put these little wings on the side. Um, and that part is not so straightforward. Um, in fact, it's a little complicated if you've never done it before. What we're actually going to do is sketch, but we're going to sketch on the bottom on the bottom surface here, which is really weird. Um, so we are going to, let's see here, how do we want to do this? I'm going to draw a rectangle. First I'm going to project geometry on these pieces here. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle like this. And the dimension of this rectangle is going to be, let's see, from the center to the outside will be 2.5 plus, let's see, what's the radius on here? 2.5 radius is 2, so that'll be 2.5 plus 1, I think is correct. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, and then I'm going to use the fillet tool to match that radius, which is 2. So 1 here. No, it's not. It is 1. Let's see, fill it one. Yeah, that that's not right at all, is it? Do, do, do. Oh, I see what I've done. I drew my rectangle incorrectly. Incorrectly. So it actually looks like this. Dimension tool, we're going to take this. 2.5 plus 1. And this is going to be 2. And this will be a quarter inch from here to here so it is centered and then I can use the fillet tool with a radius of one to do that that looks much better much better uh, and then I've got a circle on the inside here and that is going to have a diameter of 0 0.5 looks good okay I like it and now I've got to do the same thing on the other side well I'm going to be smart about it, right? I'm going to draw a line right here in the middle, and I'm just going to mirror this. Uh, I'm going to take this and mirror it around that. And what do you know? I've got it on the other side. That is smart modeling, right? And then I'm going to extrude these pieces, um, but I want to extrude everything. Why do I want to do that? You know what? I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. On this side, I'm going to extrude all of it, and on this side, I'm only going to extrude this piece. And what's going to happen is you end up with a little gap. So I'm going to flip the direction. We're going to extrude this to a thickness of 0 0.5 inches. Hit OK. And everything looks good, right? Except over here, it's filled in. And over here, do you see that, you see that gap? See what happened there? You want to be really careful about stuff like that, because it's very easy to do. So let's try this again. Extrude this, and this, and this, and this. We'll go home view. We'll flip the direction. We'll make it 0 0.5. Make sure it's a positive extrude. 
And there we go. We got one more thing to do here. We're going to sketch on the bottom once more and we're going to drill a hole right here in the middle with a diameter of 0 0.25 and we're going to extrude cut that let's see through all hit ok and this is the part that you should have this is the u bracket i'm going to rename this u bracket good i'm not going to take the time to name the extrusions here but you get the idea right okay first thing you want to do is save your part File, save as, we're going to call this U-bracket, save. If you don't save it, when you go to make the part, it's going to freak out on you. So, uh, I'm sorry, when you go to make the drawing. So, here's what we're going to do. File, new drawing. File, new drawing. So, what we've done so far is a part. Now, we're going to do a drawing. File, new drawing. And notice you've got this ginormous piece of paper. This piece of paper is like... 20 inches or 24 inches by 48 inches. It's ginormous. We're going to change the paper size and we're going to change the title block. Okay, so right here on sheet one in your browser, I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit the sheet, edit sheet. And instead of D as in Delta, we're going to use B as in Bravo. Every drawing we do, we are going to use size B as in Bravo. That is an 11 by 17 piece of paper that's pretty standard for engineering size B so you're gonna hear me say size B that is 11 by 17 uh, the next thing we're gonna do is delete this large title block delete it uh oh let's see here yep and then we're gonna add in the ANSIA title block it's a little bit small this is your title block it's got all the information just like AutoCAD we're gonna put in our base view that's kinda large uh, but that's okay I'm gonna put the base view down here top view right view isometric hit OK what do you know guys there is a multi view drawing right there notice how the base view lines up perfectly with the right hand view and the top uh, the isometric we're gonna double click Do you see this little frame that pops up around here if you double click that frame you get all kinds of options and one of the options is the style so you can do hidden line hidden line removed or shaded always make your isometrics shaded Notice the scale here is one to one. On these views, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, let's keep it like that. Very good. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is start applying some dimensions. There's two ways you can do this, as usual. There's an easy way and a hard way. The hard way is to go to Annotate, Dimension, and start manually putting in dimensions. Click. Click click like it, it takes forever right the easy way if you want to do this is to uh, retrieve all of the annotations that you've already put on your model right so if you go over here to annotate and go all the way over to retrieve model annotations right you can select the view and it will it will put all of the dimensions there for you from your model now you're gonna have to move them around to make them look correct uh, but all of the dimensions are there. So I can take this, put it right there. I'll take this diameter and put it right here. Put that one right there. Uh, I'm going to delete this one because I don't want it there. And I'm going to delete this one. And I'll delete that one. So good. Okay. And then I'm going to click this view, retrieve model annotations. Okay. And notice again, I've got all kinds of really good dimensions here. I don't need that too. I'll delete that. I'll keep that radius of 1. I'll keep that diameter of 0.5. Don't need that. I do need that one. I'll keep this. Need that one. Looks good. Notice we have three circles here. What do circles always need? That's right. They need center marks. Center mark. 1, 2, 3. Looks good. Um, and then everywhere you've got a center mark down below it, you should have a center line. So here, let's have a center line and here and here. That just shows where the hole goes through. Hopefully I'm not missing any dimensions here. Let's see. Am I? I am. I'm missing one. I need to add one in. From here to here is five inches. Good. And I don't think I need this one. Okay. Yeah. 
looks good. And then over on the right hand side, I'll click the right hand view, retrieve model annotations. Okay. And let's see, what are they giving me? They're giving me this two inch. And I don't think I need that 25. Uh, notice you can click these frames and drag, and you'll see that they stay lined up. The isometric is free to float wherever you want it. We're going to keep it right up there. And this looks pretty good. Um, this is a multi-view drawing. This looks really good. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to edit my title block. How do we fix this? Well, we go to Eye Properties. Right-click your part at the top of your browser, Eye Properties. Go to Summary, and we're going to change some stuff. The title is U bracket. Bracket. Don't need a subject. The author, that's me, Farmer, uh, Company, WHS Engineering. Um, what else do we want to put on here? Um, let's put a revision. Summary. Engineer. Where is revision? Revision number. We'll make it revision number zero. And hit OK. And notice it's got who drew it, what date it was drawn on, the company, the title, the size of the paper, the scale of the drawing, and the revision of the drawing. You need all of this on your title block, right? So this is a drawing. How are we doing on time? We're good. Uh, this is a drawing, and it's a heck of a lot easier than using AutoCAD because it makes the multi-view for you. And we're going to go to File, Save As, right? We'll save this as U bracket. Um, notice it's a .dwg, and then here's what you're going to turn in. So moving forward, now that we know how to do drawings, we're going to turn in drawings. No more screenshots. Uh, we are going to export, export to our favorite file format, PDF, portable digital format, right? PDF, uh, and we'll save this as U bracket, and let's see what we end up getting here. Save as, uh-oh, file export, I want to put it on my desktop so I know where it is. Desktop, U bracket, and so here's the file. Ta-da! There is your PDF drawing with all the information. What am I going to check? Well, I'm going to check, uh, of course, your dimensions. I'm going to check how your part looks, right? Do you have a shaded isometric? Do you have a front view? Do you have a top view? Do you have a right view? Uh, do you have all of the necessary dimensions in order to manufacture your part? Like all of the dimensions. I'll check those. Do you have center marks? Check. Do you have center lines? Check. Right? And then I'm going to check, is your name on it? Is the date on it? Do we have the company located here? Do we have the title? Is it on size B paper? Um, and do you have revision zero, right? Um, and your scale is important. You want to use up most of the paper um, without leaving a lot of blank space. So I'm going to check all of these things every time you turn in a drawing. This is what we're doing for the rest of the year is making these drawings. So front view, top view, right view, center lines, center marks, dimensions, a shaded isometric, fill out all the information on your title block. Um, and we're going to do this until you guys are just amazing at it, right? That's your drawing. Now you can, you can show dimensions on your model. This was that last objective I was talking about, right? Uh, you can annotate right here on the model. So I could annotate and I could uh, put dimensions right here if I wanted to, right? Click, check, uh, dimension here. Click, check, dimension, uh, let's see, from here to here, right? You get the idea. If you wanted to show dimensions on your model in home view for whatever reason, you can do that. Um, so like if you were emailing this to a client and you just wanted to highlight a few dimensions without actually making a full out drawing, you can do that and then you can, um, you can export to PDF, like 3D PDF, uh, or you can take a screenshot of it, shot, uh, and send it to people. It's a handy thing to do. Like if somebody emailed you and said, what's the diameter for the bolt hole there? You can dimension this, put it right there, and then take a screenshot and email that to your client and say, well, it's a half inch diameter, right? You don't have to make a full out drawing. So that is, um, that is called 3D model based definition, um, which, is, which is something you can do. Okay, I think that's it for parts.
and drawings. If you have questions, feel free to ask in class or send me an email. Happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.